Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the... Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. Well, we're getting into May here, and it's a fantastic time to get out and do a little bit of preseason scouting, which is what we're doing today. While we're doing this, hopefully y'all are enjoying today's expansion test, which is the 175 grain Nosler Acubon Long Range, which will be running through our 28 Nosler. This is, of course, a bonded core bullet. And we've tested it once before through our 270 Win Short Mag. We're excited to have it back on the channel, and if you want to check out our previous video with it, there will be a link in the description below. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's get into some testing. Now that shooting is complete, we can take a look at our impact images, and overall we've got effective expansion at all ranges fired. Of course, the Acubon long range is designed to expand effectively while traveling as slow as 1300 feet per second. And in today's test, we didn't get anywhere near that low end threshold, but we did get an opportunity here to see how well it would hold up at much higher speeds. Bullets designed for long range expansion tend to have a softer alloy or other mechanical feature which allows them to open up easier, so it's important to test the upper limits in terms of velocity as well as the lower limits to see how well they'll perform during closer shots. A common issue we see with some modern cup and core projectiles is that at higher impact velocities they tend to catastrophically come apart, but thanks to the bonding process applied to the ABLR and bullets like it, we aren't seeing any of that here. Of course, estimated impact velocities were provided today using JBM ballistic software. Getting into the 100, we've got just about perfect expansion, the projectile mushroomed back on all sides with the longest pedal ending just below the 
base of the round. At 200, we see similar results. The round peeled back on all sides, with the bonded lead clinging obstinately to the copper jacket. 300 is much the same. The pedals didn't fold in quite as much as the earlier ranges as the round started to decrease slightly in speed. At 400, we had a little bit of funny business. The round may have tumbled a bit as it was expanding through our water jugs and towel baffles. Nonetheless, this is still very good expansion. Rounding things out at the 500, as we dip just below 2,500 feet per second, the pedals are still peeling back in line or just below the base of the projectile, which is exactly what we'd like to see as we extend our range. As we're getting into our graphs here, I do want to mention real quick that the bullets we're testing today were hand-loaded, but Nosler does factory load these projectiles for this chambering. And our chronographed velocity was actually pretty close to the box posted velocity supplied by Nosler, so our results should be pretty similar to what you could expect from the factory ammo, provided it's moving out of your gun at or near the speed they list. Okay, so we had pretty consistent expansion at all ranges fired, minus the 400 where we had that kerfuffle resulting from the suspected tumble. At the earlier ranges, expansion was less due to the round moving so fast through the target medium that the expanding pedals were pinned back to the shank of the bullet. This overall averages to expansion of two times original size, but I would guess that if we didn't have that weirdness at 400, we'd be right at about 1.8 or 1.9, which is in line with prior testing. Weight retention at the earlier ranges is much lower than what we'd normally expect from a bonded bullet. From a regular Acubond, we'd normally expect to see around 80 to 85 percent weight retention. But in prior testing with this bullet through our 270 WISM, we saw average weight retention of 52.2 percent, so the 57.2 percent we're seeing here seems to be pretty close to the norm. And this makes sense, considering the ABLR is designed to open up and expand at much lower velocities than the regular Acubond. And to do that, it utilizes a much deeper cavity below the tip that allows the bullet to initiate expansion easier, and I'd guess maybe a slightly thinner jacket and softer alloy. Now the major benefit to a bonded bullet is the high weight retention that a hunter gets compared to a non-bonded cup and core bullet. Typically we see well north of 80% weight retention when testing bonded bullets from a wide range of manufacturers. And one big question that I think needs to be answered is that with weight retention in the mid 50% range, why would shooters purchase the ABLRs as either loaded ammunition or component bullets considering the steep price tag associated with them? Considering our present example, which is the 284 diameter 175 grain ABLR, we could choose to run a 284 diameter 175 grain Hornady ELDX instead, which in prior testing we found to have somewhere from mid 50 to 60 percent weight retention across a variety of chamberings. These two bullets in this weight class and diameter also share relatively similar G1 ballistic coefficients, well above 0.6, but the ELDX as a component bullet is less than half the price of the ABLR. And I think the answer to this question is that the ABLR provides better assurance that the projectile will stay together when punching through thick game like a shoulder on an elk during a hard quartering two shot. We've seen that at high impact velocities, the ELDX can in some cases delaminate and come apart, which could from certain shot angles provide less than optimal terminal effects on certain classes of game. I'm not knocking the ELDX though, I think it's a great bullet and I shoot it frequently, it just in my mind requires a behind the shoulder shot. The ABLR, while shedding a similar amount of weight on impact, will be much less likely to come apart, allowing for a wider variety of effective shot angles and placement while still punching deep on heavier game. Now I am willing to bet that at much closer ranges and lower velocities we will likely see weight retention closer to the standard Acubond, but that's testing for another day. This brings us to our use case for this bullet. With the relatively high BCs it boasts across all the offering it comes in, the ABLR should be a fantastic option for long range hunting, which is exactly what it was designed to be. And with how easily it opens up, it will likely be terminally effective at extreme long ranges as well. Nosler states that the ABLR will expand effectively at velocities down to 1300 feet per second, which with our cartridge today we didn't get anywhere near, but we're considering running some 190s through a 308, which would give us a better idea of low velocity performance. Now taking a peek at our drop chart, we see that with our muzzle velocity over 3100 feet per second, we're still moving at almost 1900 feet a second at 1000 yards, at which distance we're still producing 1400 foot pounds of energy. We've been told for years that you need a thousand foot pounds of energy for a deer and 1500 foot pounds for elk, which I don't completely subscribe to, but I think it's a decent metric to be aware of. So even though we're 100 foot pounds below the long standing recommendation for elk at a thousand yards, we're still almost 600 feet per second above what Nosler says is the minimum expansion threshold. And so, in my opinion, I think this bullet in this chambering moving above 3100 at the muzzle would be effective deer, bear, or elk medicine out to a thousand yards, and I think it would still function quite well for close in shots under 100 yards due
due to it being a bonded tough bullet. I also think that this bullet would be a great option in a 7mm PRC or fast twist 7 rem mag out to easily 1000 for deer and 800 or so for elk. I'm sure there are shooters out there who have used it past a grand effectively on game and if you're one of those folks or if you have experiences of your own with this bullet make sure you drop them in the comments section below. One last note as we wrap up for anyone looking to build their own load in this cartridge today's bullet was loaded on a max recommended charge from Nosler's online loading data of Reloader 33 with the bullet set a smidge past COAL. As always consider helping us out by liking and subscribing if you want to stay up to date with our content. We appreciate everyone who interacts with our videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.